Dr. Tali Jordan, and I'm excited to introduce uh, the first speaker from my lab. My lab focuses a lot on research of invertebrates, which are spineless animals, and they encompass all kinds of things, from snails to insects, and even um, birds that live inside of other things. Matt Reeves started about a year ago working with me on these interesting relationships between snails and parasites, and he's going to share a bit more about his work. So, to start off, I just want to go through the purpose of my study. Uh, the purpose of my study was to identify these parasitic, parasitic flatworms that uh, infect uh, the stress part of snail in Alabama. And uh, the, uh, the reason why this is important is because the uh, parasitic flatworms that are associated with the snail was a whole new study. And uh, Alabama is the number one. Uh, Hot spot for snow diversity in Alabama uh, in the north of North America. Um, and also, uh, these uh, parasites can have an effect on the snow and uh, also the ecosystem where they occur. So, just to go straight into it, I'll just talk about the background and uh, snail and parasite relationships. Um, here, so first, uh, the first interesting, interesting thing is that these parasites, uh, their habitats are consist of the host that they infect. So they do not occur, occur in the wild. Um, and so I'm just starting with the life cycle. So their life cycle is very complex. They uh, have multiple hosts. Uh, they always have an intermediate host, which is a snail. And what happens is is that uh, an egg, a, the uh, vertebrate. Uh, the vertebrate host always uh, defecates uh, some eggs, and those eggs will then become larva. And once those larvae develop in the snail, uh, some free uh, swimming larva will form and burst out the snail, about 100 or 1,000. And then it will uh, infect another host, like a fish. And then once that fish is eaten by the uh, definitive host, which is like a bird or a mammal, uh, the uh, cycle just kind of repeats. And the first thing I did is there's a uh, creek off of uh, Chocolate Road or string system uh, that has a lot of freshwater snails, different species, and the uh, and my uh, targeted uh, species of snail, which is Kipple of the Sizing, which is a uh, black bear snail, uh, is uh, the current so first, I collect the snail, I take it to the lab, I then uh, uh, smash the shell, and I will take out its uh, tissue, uh, its uh, gonad tissue, and uh, intestinal tissue, and, and then I will smash it onto the uh, slide, and then when you look at the slide, you'll see these like uh, three like uh, swimming forms of uh, Scaria, if it's infected or not. So it kind of like right here and here. And then I would identify uh, the uh, treatment that by its uh, form, the form it takes. And, uh, by the form it takes. And uh, using a uh, book, um, and then I was able to identify two more parasites or two forms of uh, uh, two species of tumentos that occur in the living cell. A little bit of size them. There's uh, the uh, this uh, two right up here. Um, I was able to, and if I wasn't able to identify it uh, due to uh, due to it not you know being completely developed and so I could identify it. I would then, um, I would then just, uh, just uh, let it last un unidentifiable or just early stage of its development. And then, um, to, uh, and then what I did was I looked at the uh, percentage of infected, calculate that. Um, there's a discrepancy for August, uh, so I did a five month study. And uh, so for August, there's like one four. So these parasites, I mean, these uh, freshwater snails only live up to one year. And it's also very patchy when you collect them in the pond. So uh, it was kind of 
it's kind of a hit or miss if you can find one, but the goal is always to get like uh, 20 to 30 uh, stamps. And I was able to identify the uh, uh, the uh, families that these uh, forms uh, are located, and one of the forms is uh, new. This is probably just due to it being out of study. And uh, my next goal would be to uh, go to other sites to uh, study, uh, study, to study the snow. Uh, are there any questions? So you said that it has two hosts, right? So can the second host be human? Can we be affected by the parasites if we ate a fish? So they have about three hosts, but yes. Uh, Depending if, so they are host specific. Uh, we, they could be humans. They could uh, affect humans. More questions for our speaker? No. One more. I just for, you said something happened in August in your August collection. Is that why there's a yeah? So when I'm out of the stream, uh, so they are like uh, buried under like some soft sediment, like sandy. Okay. So it's kind of hard to find. Okay. So it was lack of getting find them. If no more questions, then let's thank our speaker again. Our next presentation will begin at 9.45. So we have a few minutes.